Today's workout will help you balance your hormones with gentle yet effective movements that will optimize your postpartum recovery and leave you feeling energized, not depleted. It's full body and timed intervals as always, so you can work at your own pace. All you need is a mat and a set of light to medium dumbbells. Let's get started. Today's workout is a 15 minute postpartum hormone balancing workout. We're gonna work strength moves with a set of dumbbells or your body weight to really respect our body where it's at hormonally after having a baby. That means we're gonna keep our heart rate low, but we're also going to stay in the fat burning zone and optimize our strength gains in this workout. You'll need a set of medium to heavy weights and maybe a set of lighter weights for some upper body exercises. Grab your heavier weights first. We're gonna start with the lower body exercises. We're gonna move slow and controlled one minute of work. We're starting with a rope manian deadlift. So feet are under your hips. We're gonna hinge from the hips. Take those weights down until you find a flat back and then stand up. And we're gonna add to this movement a bent over row. Pull those elbows in and back and then stand all the way up. So that deadlift comes first, hinge from the hips and then pull those elbows in and back, stand up. So we wanna maintain a nice neutral spine. That means your chin is tucked in Nice flat back, belly button is pulled in toward the spine so your core is engaged throughout all these movements. And in that row, we wanna pull those elbows in and back, engaging that upper back, so squeezing the shoulder blades together, keeping those shoulders retracted throughout the movement. So that means we're never rounding at the spine, we're always keeping the shoulder blades back and down. Again, nice flat back. If you can't quite go as low, if you can't get your back parallel to the floor, no sweat, just come here. Stay a little higher in the movement and you can always do it with lighter weights too. Okay, we get a little bit longer break between the sets because I want you to really focus on each movement and resting as long as you need to so the heart rate doesn't spike. We've still got 10 seconds. We're gonna move to a front rack squat, feet outside your hips. Weights can be facing you or right on your shoulders, whatever is more comfortable. We're gonna sit down and back into those hips, come into that squat, stand up at the top. So again, focus on moving slow and controlled here. I want your heart rate to stay down. So we stay in that fat burning zone, respect our hormones. And then also that's gonna allow for quality control. So we can really focus on the depth of the movement, the technique. So in the squat, we're pushing the hips back and down, stopping just above the knee line or about knee level if you can get there. If not, you can come a little higher. I want you to make sure you can wiggle your toes. That lets me know the weight is in your muscles, not your joints. And as you're hinging forward, you can see I'm hinging at my hips. There's a slight lean in my torso, but I'm not rounding my spine. Shoulders are retracted, shoulder blades are retracted, and that core is engaged. Knees are soft. Little squeeze of the glutes at the top, but we're not thrusting the hips forward. We're keeping them neutral. Let's do one more and then we're gonna take that 20 second break. Rest right here. All right, moving on to a sumo squat position. So you're gonna take your feet nice and wide here. Toes turn out a little bit more now. We're gonna do a sumo squat with an upright row. So the dumbbells are gonna just shave your legs on the way down so they face you. Shoulders retracted, abs tight. We're gonna squat down and then come up, pull elbows up and slightly back. So hinge and then pull. So those knees push out, weights come up close to the body during both those movements. Squeeze shoulder blades together and you can even make it a fluid movement like this. You don't have to pause at the top, but wherever you're at, just respect that. Move with control. That's the goal here with all these intervals. That's why I did a minute. It's a long time, but that's not to say you need to do more reps. It's for it's allowing for you to move slowly and really focus on quality of the repetitions and also to take more breaks. If you need a break in the interval, go ahead, take one. It's all about, again, respecting where your body is at hormonally. And it's so important to do workouts that aren't gonna increase stress too much. We want good stress. Rest too much, excess cortisol can lead to fat storage, fat gain, we don't want that. So we're keeping that cortisol low today. All right, backwards lunges. I'm gonna show you from the side. So feet are hip width apart. 
shoulders are back and down, abs are tight. We're gonna take a long step back, starting with that front leg, 90 degrees at the knees. Here we go. So we lunge, and then we stand up, switch. Lunge, stand up, switch. Now you can pause like this, or you can drop straight into it. Do you see the difference? Straight down. Up to you where you're at, you can do that little pause. If you really wanna focus more on the control and the stability, but if you feel really comfortable with balance, go straight into it. Either way, you want that front knee stopping over your ankle and drive through your front heel to lift. That's gonna allow you to effectively target your glutes. And then that's gonna help you stay balanced, keep that pressure in your muscles out of your knees. You don't want it in the knees for sure. Now in this one, you could also drop the weights. It's a good body weight exercise. Couple more here. And rest, okay. Now we're going to move on to a triple pulse squat. So you can do a couple of things. You can have the dumbbells in that front rack position. You can use one dumbbell or you can use no dumbbells. I'm gonna use one. Take your feet just a little wider than your hips. So we're gonna sit back, three pulses, and then we stand up. So we go three, two, one, all the way up. Three, two, one, all the way up. I'll show you from the side profile again. So just like in that squat, we want the same range of motion. Hips back and down, stopping just above the knees, 90 degrees, weight back in those heels. And when you come up, you wanna squeeze the glutes, but again, keep them squeezed here. Don't overextend into that low back. That way, you're keeping that pressure in the glutes and we're not overextending into the back, pushing out through the abs, we don't wanna do that. So keeping the chest up here, shoulders back and down. You can always drop the weight, this one is intense. That's why we're only doing three pulses at a time. But I want that pulse really small so you feel that pressure in the lower body, in those legs and glutes. Let's get one more in. We've got three, two, one, time for that rest. Okay, now we're moving on to a lateral lunge. Again, you could use one weight, you could keep it here, you could use both or no weights. A lot of options here. So we're gonna be stepping left and then right, or right and then left whatever direction you wanna go. Nice big step out, feet stay straight ahead. We're gonna hinge at the hip, sitting into that glute, and then stand up, switch sides. So if I'm going about the length of my mat here, you want a big step out, enough to where this leg goes straight, and enough to where you can really push your hip back, getting into those glutes and you'll feel a nice stretch through that inner thigh as well. You'll hinge forward a little bit. That's gonna allow you to get into your hips. But what I don't want you to do again is rounding your spine. So be mindful of that. Really push out of that standing leg, drive through that heel, squeeze the butt. The deeper we can get into those hips, with control, of course, with good technique, the more we're gonna get out of it. Couple more here. And rest. Okay, moving on to upper body exercises. If you wanna switch out your weights, you could go lighter for this next round, since we are doing some more upper body things. 10 seconds, we're gonna move from a front raise to a lateral raise. So feet are under your hips, core is tight, Shoulders are back and down. We're gonna bring those weights straight up. Front raise, slowly back to the legs, lateral raise. So when you come straight up, plates or dumbbells face the ground, and then shoulder height in both those movements. And you wanna make sure your hips stay square underneath those shoulders, abs really strong here, because we don't wanna, again, thrust the hips to get those weights up. If you're trying to do that, it's a good indicator that your weights are a little too heavy. So go slower, go lighter, and really focus on that controlled movement up and down. Same thing with that range. If you're really flinging it up, you might get above your shoulders, but that's not the goal. We wanna stay about shoulder level. Again, keep that pressure on the shoulders so you're not using momentum. Less than 10 seconds now. 
And slow is good because we can really focus on targeting that muscle, rest. And again, good technique is so imperative. And then once we get the moves down, we can go a little bit faster next time. Okay, facing the side, kickstand row. One foot back, heel is up. Front foot has most of your weight. You're leaning forward, hinging from the hips. We're gonna do just one weight so you can drop the other, pull that weight to your hip, and then release. So your abs are tight here. You've got a long straight spine. You're just pulling that dumbbell to your hip, squeezing through your lats right here. So you're avoiding rotation even as you pull that elbow up. That's gonna allow you to effectively work those anti-rotation muscles of the core. You're really pushing through your front heel here. Again, allowing you to engage your glute. And it's the same arm of the leg that's behind. So again, we're strengthening that posterior chain, the core stabilizers. Less than 10 seconds now. Nice. All right, we're gonna do that same thing, moving to the other side. So I'll show you from the other side. And again, just a little space between those feet, front heel down, back heel is up. We hinge forward from the hips. Again, like you're looking over a cliff. I say this all the time. You're looking over a cliff, but you don't wanna fall over. So we've got good core engagement, nice straight spine. And you might be surprised how much weight you can handle here. I'm not telling you you need to do the heaviest weight you possibly can, but when in doubt for a good hormone balancing, fat burning workout, it's a good idea to do a heavier weight and move slower than to have a really light weight and move super, super fast. So put your body under a little bit of stress. Have a heavier weight maybe for some of these movements where you're really using your legs and those bigger muscle groups. And again, a little bit of stress is really good for the body. It allows it to adapt and change, especially when it comes to weight training. And we're moving slow, doing longer intervals, so it allows you to get a good number of reps while still maintaining control, keeping that heart rate down. A couple more here. Rest. All right, moving to some more arm exercises, a bicep curl. We're gonna go preacher curl to hammer curl. So I'll show you that preacher curl. We're gonna come forward, hinging from the hips, bringing those arms to the shoulders, releasing, stand up, hammer curl. I'll show you that from the side. So we're gonna hinge, preacher curl, stand up, hammer curl. So we hinge, preacher curl, then we rotate those dumbbells, hammer curl. Let me show you again from the front. So, forearms to biceps, and then candlesticks, hammer curl. Sit into your hips here, good posture the whole time. The difference with that preacher curl is your hinge forward, that's a longer lever, making those arms work a little bit harder by pushing them away from you like this, and then a little bit easier, a little bit less challenging on that hammer curl. But we're getting both of those parts of the biceps, Again, moving nice and controlled. If you have lighter weights, it might be easier, but still focus on that core. Pulling that belly button in. All right, rest. We're gonna move to a reverse fly. So we're gonna hinge at the hips again. A lot of these movements we hinge forward because that really allows us to strengthen the back of the body, which is so important. So I'll show you from here from the side. We're gonna hinge from the hips, open the arms wide, and then stand up, repeat it. From the front, here's what it looks like. We hinge, open, stand up. So push back into the hips, open the arms shoulder level. Here's the side profile again. So hinge, open. So again, long straight back, just like that deadlift, just like the kickstand row. We wanna squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze the glutes as we stand up. So you get a little deadlift in there too, did you notice that? All really great movements for strengthening your core postpartum without having to do a crunch or anything that would compromise your 
spinal or core integrity. Squeeze those shoulder blades. Make sure you're keeping your elbows soft here. You don't wanna fully lock out or extend the arms. And the more you bend the arms, the easier it will be. So if you do need to, you can bend your arms more and pull the elbows up. But if you can't really try to open those arms, get all those muscles in the back, the shoulders, rest. All right, setting up that walking push-up. We're gonna start wide and then go narrow with the hands. So hands a little less wide than your mat and then knees wide if your knees are down or feet wide if you're on your feet. We're gonna push up, bring your chest down to elbow height and then we're gonna walk the hands in, in push up here, bring those elbows to the back of the room and then walk back out, out, out. So your shoulders stay over your wrists right here, lock in that core belly button to spine, move it in quietly. It's like you're trying not to make any noise as you move those hands, trying not to move anything but the arms. Can you do that? Really slow and intentional here. And a good option to modify this is to bring your knees in a little closer. But again, we're not aiming for a number here. We're aiming for good control and feeling strong. So that means your body is like a board. You feel really stable here. And that might just look like one or two of these, but that is exactly what I want you to focus on. Good technique, not a number. Last one. That's it, there you have it. So that was our 15 minute full body hormone balancing strength workout. I hope you all enjoyed that and you're feeling good, really gotten in that fat burning zone and got a good pump for those muscles. So I'm gonna do a whole series on hormone balancing workouts, so check out my other workouts there. And I have a ton of postpartum workouts on my YouTube playlist that will help complement this workout, especially for your core and healing your body postpartum. So like, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let me know in the comments what you wanna see for our next workout.